Good morning, everyone. Um, I think everyone has already said thank you to the organising committee. I think it's impressive that the organisers, the organising committee, actually managed to organise this on World Environment Day. They're to be applauded for that. My name is Frank Roke. I'm the UK Country Manager for Innovin. It's always nice to come back to the Heath. I started my career in ICI here 30 years ago. I know for some of you, you'll find that hard to believe. My first role, my first role was how do we generate hydrogen more efficiently in our electrolysis cells? Going back 30 years ago, the challenges of today were coming to the fore then. And we were looking at hydrogen in terms of what else can we do with hydrogen? How do we get into renewable hydrogen? Going back all that time. And one of the questions we asked ourselves is, well, how far away are we from a hydrogen economy? And about 30 years ago, we said, probably about five years. Then every five years I go, so how far away are we from a hydrogen economy? Oh, about five years, we think. It is fantastic to be standing here today, not hoping that we're five years away, but expecting that in a far shorter time scale, the hydrogen economy will become a reality and it will be driven by the Northwest. Now, you will have picked up from the accent, I'm not from round here. Um, but I do feel the Northwest, having worked and lived here at various times over the last 30 years, is a spiritual home uh, for me. So, great to be back, and it's great to talk about opportunities that we have in the Northwest to drive the UK forward. Now, this is the technical bit. So, what I will say is there's a table up at the back where our technical experts are. If you fire any questions at me, you will realise very quickly I am Teflon coated. They will get fired up to the back. Please take the time to speak to the guys at the back about what we're doing. They will give you a far better answer than I could hope to give, but I can give you the overview. From an Innovin perspective, and Innovin has grown out of, uh, is an Ineos company. We talk about safety as a number one priority, but underpinning that is health and the environment. And everything we do around hydrogen takes the boxes of health, because you burn hydrogen, you get water. Environment, an obvious one. And for us as Innovin, sustainability and innovation have to be at the heart of what we do, because that's how we survive. So again, for us in the Northwest in particular, looking at the hydrogen economy, not only takes the boxes, it's the right thing to do. Now, uh, those of you familiar with Runcon will know that the site has been there for over 100 years. Uh, we have a chloralkali process. Uh, and hydrogen is the forgotten product. You know, people think about caustic soda and chlorine, but we've been producing hydrogen as long as we've been producing chloralkali products. Uh, that cell room is uh, 2004, 2005. Very modern, one of the, the biggest cell rooms in Europe. And through that cell room, we produce significant amounts of hydrogen. So on our doorstep, we already have a, a, an asset capable of producing hydrogen, which we already compress, we already handle. We've had years and years of experience of doing that. Nice picture of that. I think you turn these into, when we talk about hydrogen, being a chemist and being surrounded by chemical engineers, you hear all sorts of units like R bars, meters cubed, bar G, so you think, what are they talking about? Actually, I think we convert it into, that's enough hydrogen in terms of what we produce for 1,000 buses. Taxes are 100 trains. So we're already at a place where the infrastructure exists to tap in. It's not something we have to put in place tomorrow. It's already there. One of the things that's been talked about is uh, the storage of hydrogen. And one, we, we have two, well, we have several projects ongoing. I'm going to talk about two, two main projects. Again, a key element uh, is having all the component parts of the supply chain together. So whilst we produce the hydrogen, we have consumers of hydrogen here in all sorts of various guises, but we also have people who can distribute the hydrogen. And actually moving hydrogen about is one of the key challenges that faces us. But you then have the storage challenge. I don't think it's realised that within the northwest of England, we have significant knowledge and experience of how you store gases underground in salt cavities. Because the key product for us is brine that comes from Northwich, but we can use those cavities. So we have a ready-made storage solution. We are working with Bayes and with other partners, Element Energy, Store Energy, uh, to look at the feasibility of how we take the hydrogen and how we store it in gas caverns. We're at that initial feasibility stage. Um, at some point, we will be going back to government asking for a much bigger project to turn the feasibility into a reality. I am very confident that we have a solution in terms of 
hydrogen storage in the northwest on our doorstep. And that is something that can be enacted with the people we have in a very short time frame. Those of you familiar with Cheshire, um, you may not know, you know, as, if, as it says, we already have significant gas storage capacity in the U within the UK. It's part of uh, how we operate through store energy. We've got all the things that we need. So again, the jigsaw pieces are there. They were there 30 years ago, by the way. So again, it's not something that's new. The techies insisted I put something in that sort of showed because it's a technical one. Um, to my simplistic mind, uh, what we do to create a salt cavity is we take water, we pump it in the ground, we make salty water, we extract it, and we get left with a cavity. We can determine the shape, the size of those cavities by how we decide to pump the water in and a whole series of other variables that we, we manage, but it's well-known technology. And I think that's one of the key things we want to get through as Innovin is the things we're talking about are not 10, 20 years out. They are things that are capable today. You know, it's not, it's five years. They're all things that we can do today. The other one which we're involved in now, um, historically the, the Runcorn site was one of the biggest consumers of electricity in the UK, and its, it's heyday it took about 1% of the national grid, it's equivalent to the city of Liverpool. Um, one of the projects we're looking at is, as well as uh, using our existing chloralkali technology, is to put in a 100 megawatt, hence Project Centurion, water electrolysis system. That requires a lot of electricity, as you can imagine, uh, to, to drive that, but we have the infrastructure to do that. In a circular economy, in a clean economy, that energy comes from renewables. Uh, Steve Rotherham already talked about the renewables uh, benefits we have in the Northwest. You turn that into producing hydrogen, you store your hydrogen, you've got it for all the vehicles. So a nice, a nice circular clean economy to do this. We're progressing well with, again, our partners, so you can see a number of partners in terms of the feasibility, the design, and how these things would work. And these are all progressing at pace. So we have these projects in terms of how we store the hydrogen, we have the projects in terms of how we produce the hydrogen, and you'll notice from the electrolysis point of view, there is no CO2. Clean energy gives you hydrogen, and there's no CO2 in the equation. And that, to me, is a big plus for the use of electrolysis in this area. So, in its simplest sense, offshore wind, not new. Mesi tidal, yes, new, but the actual concept of tidal energy goes back a long time. Solar energy, not new. Water electrolysis, not new. I worked on it 30 years ago. People were working on it long before then. Gas storage, not new. Hydrogen buses, not new. Trains, not new. Okay, at the forefront with some of these. So if you go across the whole chain, the innovative part is putting all the bits together. Doesn't sound very clever, but that is what I think has held us back, is not having all the people who have a role to play, government, local and national, Innovin, such as ourselves, Alstom, uh, Ulemco, some of the, t uh, the companies that go into conversion of vehicles, all of those people working together in an uncompromising way to deliver the hydrogen economy. Now, I, I will finish with a, a plug for Ineos because I wouldn't be doing my job and I get shot. A number of you would know that um, Ineos is also developing uh, a 4x4. When the uh, Discovery was taken out of service, uh, Jim Ratcliffe, with a few of his colleagues, got together in a pub and decided we're going to build a car. That was two and a bit years ago. That is progressing very well. Um, we expect to, I'm sure there'll be some announcements going forward. Part of that Grenadier is we're looking at the fuel cell alternative. So we do want places in the UK where we can fuel them as well. Um, but one of the things for me is that was an idea that within two and a bit years is almost at fruition. That same uncompromising approach is what we need to drive the hydrogen economy in the Northwest. I shall leave you with that. Thank you very much.